What's more impressive than a Jedi? Two Jedi. But there's one reason why Ahsoka's powerful dyad doesn't make all that much sense. Most of the titles in Ahsoka offer a pretty clear insight into each episode's themes. Master and Apprentice features the uncomfortable reunion of Ahsoka Tano and her Padawan, Sabine Wren. Toil and Trouble features plenty of both, and acts as a nifty reference to the witchy ways of Morgan Elsbeth. Time to Fly gives us a cool space battle and a pot of spacefaring Pergil, while Fallen Jedi deals with the aftermath of Ahsoka's defeat to Balin Skull. Shadow Warrior features Anakin's return in the world between worlds, and Far, Far Away takes us into an entirely new galaxy. <laughs> you get the drill. Part 7, Dreams and Madness, takes things in a more esoteric direction. The episode does feature plenty of both, from Balin's wish to find the hidden power and Peridia to Thrawn's meddling with the Night Sister's magic. However, the events don't fit the title quite as snugly as fans of the show might be used to, which makes Dreams of Madness the perfect episode to whip out a particularly strange force power. Early in the episode, Ahsoka locates Sabine by using the force to reach out to her. With the action scenes and plot developments that follow, it's easy to chalk this up as the kind of everyday force shenanigans the Jedi are known for. However, this being Star Wars, every single application of the force has an extremely detailed history. This particular power move is known as the Force Dyad, and it's essentially a bond between two force-sensitive individuals. The most famous dyadic connection in the Star Wars franchise is a fraught yet passionate dynamic between Kylo Ren and Rey, around which most of the sequel trilogy revolves. Notably though, both Kylo and Rey have already proven themselves as powerful force users by the time their dyad establishes itself. Here's the problem though, because it's been explicitly stated that Sabine's connection to the Force is at the lower end of the scale as far as Jedi apprentices go, it should be utterly impossible for Ahsoka to forge such a connection with her. Well, I discovered that according to Hu Yang, I'm the worst candidate to be a Jedi out of every Jedi he's ever known. Ahsoka's ironclad connection with the Force has been firmly established over the course of her many, many appearances in the Star Wars franchise. In Ahsoka, she's not only a masterful combatant, but so powerful that she can handily use rare force powers like psychometry. Because of this, it's entirely believable that she might be able to maintain a force dyad connection to another person. However, the dyadic connection historically requires both sides to be totally in tune with the force, which Sabine very much isn't. While Ahsoka and Sabine clearly share a strong, if sometimes strained relationship, Ahsoka has spent plenty of time hammering home the apparent fact that Sabine is all but useless in the ways of the Force. As such, it should be quite impossible for Ahsoka to maintain a Force bond with her Padawan. Of course, that's assuming that Sabine's Force sensitivity is at the virtually non-existent level the series has shown so far. Despite the show's insistence that Sabine is a low-end Force user at best, Ahsoka has essentially telegraphed the end of her arc by including several scenes that tease her successful use of Force powers. At this point, a scene where she finally learns to wield the Force is virtually guaranteed. With that in mind, the fact that Ahsoka is able to locate her with her apparent use of a Force dyad seems like a subtle hint that Sabine is far more powerful than she realizes. No doubt it will be fascinating to see where Ahsoka takes her as the series reaches its conclusion.